you're having a wonderful weekend, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch 2 again. I know, I know, I know. That seems to be all we're talking about lately, but it is the hottest developing story on the block, at least until Nintendo reveals it. And then the developing story from that point would probably be, hey, let's talk about the actual games coming to the system, because right now no one can talk about the games because... They're under NDAs, right? So let's go ahead and get into this because we have some new information coming from China. That's right. We have some information coming out of China. Uh, we're going to mark this information as rumor because you know it's hard to verify. Now, I did machine translate some stuff and have a pretty good idea of what was being said, and it doesn't sound too crazy, but it is still new information. We also have Nintendo themselves uh, have the Nintendo Museum launching this, this week, right? October 2nd is the first day of the Nintendo Museum, and there's already some tour videos out there, including one by our friend Rogers Base. And in that video, well, it looks like Nintendo has places has positions for Nintendo Switch 2, which could suggest a reveal sooner than later or might just not mean anything and they're just future-proofing their museum, but there is that as well. And one last thing, you remember that little USB-C device we talked about that might plug into the top of the Switch 2? We have major updates on that as well to go over, so we'll have timestamps to these three major stories down below. Uh, but if you're enjoying this video and you're having a good time and you want to stay as up-to-date on Nintendo Switch 2 as possible, all you have to do is subscribe right here at Nintendo Prime. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Appreciate if you would drop a like as well. And why don't you go down in the comments down below and tell me what is your most anticipated third party game that you really want to come to Nintendo Switch 2? It could be one that isn't even out yet, or it could be one that came out a decade ago or more. It's up to you. Now, let's go ahead and dive in because we have this new information coming from a, uh, well, a, a person who was a editor. I, I, again, I don't know their name, but. Uh, I'll link to their video and all of this so you guys have all the evidence here, but this person was an editor at a very popular video game magazine, and now they have a fairly popular Billy Billy account, which if you guys don't know what Billy Billy is, it's essentially the Chinese YouTube, and uh, this video has been getting a lot of attention over there, and it came across my feed, and I decided, you know what, let's take this video and let's actually translate it natively. I made this mistake in my last video where I did not translate the actual podcast of the report we were talking about, which led to us relying on the translations of Vandal themselves and the way they transcribe things and the way they described it on their website, and it turned out to be a bit clickbaity. Well, I didn't want that to happen this time around, so I actually took their video and got three different AI translations uh, and they all pretty much agree with themselves so we're just going to go with the, the one website and we'll link to the website I used as well so you're well aware of how I translated this and we got some interesting little tidbits because he claims to have some first-hand knowledge uh, and well it's just it's really interesting let's let's get into this so after running it through three different AI translations and having all of them give very similar results uh, it should be noted that I can't verify the information beyond, obviously, these translations. Now, he talks about some of the current leaks and all of that, but he does combine it with some first-hand information that he claims to have about Switch 2. Now, he speculates, and this part is just speculation, that if it does come out in March, it should be revealed in October. I think all of us have had a very, very similar uh you know, speculation here. But here's what he actually claims. Here's probably what you're, the, the brux of the conversation. So he claims he has firsthand information that comes from a parts supplier for Nintendo. This partner supposedly has an assembled test machine. The system is capable, as in it will work with current controllers and Joy-Con, likely via Bluetooth. I'm pulling in the, the Bluetooth part myself. He doesn't actually say that, but I just want to clarify in case the Joy-Cons can't slide on the on the side of the system. Yeah, you, you can probably still technically use them with the system, but probably not in handheld mode. Anyways, uh, the new Joy-Cons, so whatever these new controllers are, still uses the existing Alpine dual axis linear motor, and that's basically HD rumble, uh, though it's a little smaller than the ones that are in the current Joy-Con. It still has NFC support, which isn't a shocker there, and it claims there are some extra pins in the cartridge slot itself, which does suggest higher speeds for Switch 2 cartridges, which could also suggest higher capacity as well. We've talked about this in the past, so it's highly likely they're using a newer standard for those cartridges. One, because they might actually be a little cheaper to manufacture, and two, they just have better read and write speeds. So it makes a lot of sense to use them, uh, especially if the cost is there, the cost effectiveness compared to Switch's current cartridges. Now, what's interesting here is he does know that it can take Switch 1 cartridges 
via backwards compatibility. Not the first time we've heard it, but it's just another source on that information. Uh, it claims Nintendo's primary focus with the power upgrades was to help third parties have a smooth cross-platform strategy with them. I don't know if that's something he got from Nintendo or if he got that from third-party contacts. Again, he was an editor at a gaming magazine, probably has contacts out there in the industry as well. So maybe that's what Nintendo told those contacts. Uh, he mentions that there is a built-in microphone and camera. So... Hey, well, guess we'll have to wait and see if that pans out. And this is the part that is, is, is interesting. So it appears that when you're using 4K in docked mode, you're limited to 30 FPS. Now, he seems to imply that this limit is, you know, just what the system seems capable to output. Like, it's a hardware limitation. Though, I do got to know, that feels really weird because both HDMI 2.0 and 2.1... Uh, they have 4K 60 as like a standard. So I'm guessing that if there is a limit to 4K 30, it's either a software lock limit on it. Uh, I, I think that's probably actually not just either or. I, I think it is a software lock as a Nintendo's operating system is limiting the output to 4K 30. Uh, maybe that'll be unlocked in the future. Uh, maybe that's not what it's going to be like at launch. I could assume a lot of like third-party companies that are using 4K will be using 4K 30 anyway, so I don't know that it's like a huge thing. But I do see like some indie games that might want to run in 4K and maintain 60 FPS, maybe not being happy with that. But again, I can't imagine it's a hardware lock because that would mean they're using like a really, really, really old HDMI standard, even older than what the Nintendo Switch OLED has in place. I just don't. I don't see that happening. I think Nintendo uh, might be just software locking it at this time, and that means it could also be software unlocked at a later time, even before the system comes out. So just throwing that out there, though, there seems to be, at least in that testing unit, a lock there. Again, that's in the testing unit. Is that what's in the dev units? Is that what's in the final? Who knows? But that is obviously just what's being shared right there. And I, look, I don't have a lot of thoughts on this. It seems kind of um, little tiny little details here and there. Some stuff like the physical backwards compatibility I hope is there. The faster cartridges I hope is there. The rest, I can kind of take it or leave it. But uh, what I can't take or leave is Nintendo's museum. It's now on my bucket list. I want to go there someday. And our friend Roger's base was able to go early. Nintendo brought him there. He did a tour. He's got a whole video up. I really suggest you watch the full video. But there's one image I took from it uh, because... <laughs> to me, it's really interesting. Y'all know, like, there was those displays with the Nintendo Switch and then a row behind it. We, I wanted to see what was on that row. Conveniently, Roger's Base has no footage in his video of it, maybe because he wasn't allowed back to that section. I don't know. Uh, but he said he spent five hours in that room, so I can't imagine he wasn't back there. And maybe when he comes on the show on November 27th, because he's coming on our podcast, I can ask him then if there was anything back there. But, uh, he had this one image in his thing that clearly is pointing at Nintendo Switch 2. So it said, confirm Nintendo has slots at the Nintendo Museum for the next one. Again, this is directly from his video. Uh, and you'll see this is obviously an area that has controllers over the years. And this is where you see that there's the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance. You, know, you got the original DS. Then you have the Wii. Then you got the uh, 3DS. Then you got the Wii U. Then you got the Switch. And then you get the Switch Lite. And you might go, why is there two versions of the Switch? Well, these are detachable controllers. These are controllers that don't attach. So uh, don't detach anyway. So that's why you would have both of these here. Both of these versions technically have slightly different controllers. And then you wouldn't put Switch OLED on because, again, Switch OLED is just using the same controllers as Switch. So that's not considered something new then you see this little area here that's completely blank called 2020s which i find interesting because obviously the 2020s is going to change to like 2025 2026 etc whenever the system launches but this blank spot here is clearly for the nintendo switch 2 also the fact that this has 2020s what this does tell me is at least at the time the museum launches there is no plan for the nintendo switch 2 to be revealed so expecting a reveal on the 30th or the first or even october 2nd i think is just kind of out the window at this point the reveal is going to be after that and then they'll probably update this obviously once things are revealed but i do find it interesting that nintendo obviously planned this into their museum uh they're going to have stuff in there about nintendo switch 2 it might not be a lot of stuff but there will be something just to denote it in their history uh but yeah I don't know. I thought that was just really cool to look at. Really fascinating. Uh, it says nothing about when Nintendo's really going to reveal it outside of probably not before uh, the place opens on Tuesday. But who knows? Maybe it will be revealed before then. They'll just update that later. Beats me. I don't know how proactive they're going to be at updating their museum. But that is something that at least I thought was just noteworthy. Uh, and it comes from Nintendo directly. So... That alone is really cool. Uh, now, if you guys remember, we talked about this device that plugs into the top of your Nintendo Switch 2 or might that doesn't have its own battery. Well, 
turns out it's not so simple and man we got a lot of stuff to go over with this so we talked about it on the podcast uh last week and we had some interesting details that deal with this thing coming out on march 20th but before we talk about that because that is a potential release date for switch 2 Let's look at this update over on Reddit. So it says additional SCC docs give us a rough size, shape, and purpose for the Nintendo CLO 001 wireless device. All right. So he says, hey, y'all, we made a video, but for the readability sake, here are the key things found from the 24 gigahertz millimeter wave sensor documents of the Nintendo's SCC filing, previously the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi docs uh, were reviewed. So it indicates earlier testing date than the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi part, shows a distance of 24 gigahertz antenna from each side of the device. This gives us the shape. Uh, size, shape, and dimensions. The dimensions should be approximately 90.6 millimeters by 90.6 millimeters by 83.7 millimeters. So that's width, height, and depth. Very square shaped, I guess, is the way I kind of look at that. Uh, give or take a little bit for plastic. This was calculated with antenna placement measurements. For example, the 24 gigahertz antenna is 10.5 millimeters from the top edge and 80.5 millimeters from the bottom edge, giving us a total height of 90.6 millimeters. In the video, a 3D model is shown to see the scale of the device, and uh, he, he does show it in the video. We'll, we'll look at it. Well, I'll, you know, I'll just put it on screen. It looks kind of large to me. Uh, a, a little large for a wearable, especially if that's what this is. Now, uh, Nintendo did submit this as a wireless device while the original Switch was submitted as a game console. Controllers are submitted as controllers. So this is some sort of wireless communication device, but it, it, it's not a, a controller input or uh, of any type. So the device is listed as a UMPC, which is a portable device, ultra mobile PC or tablet-esque. It does have a screen, guys. There's a screen on it. Uh, UMPC devices. According to the FCC, have some type of screen. It is reasonable to expect a screen or glass on the front of the device. According to the FCC, this is a portable device, and thus it can be inferred that there is a battery, but the battery may be um, hidden behind documents that aren't public at this time because there are some files that are not public and won't be public because it could just be part of the core design. And it cannot run portably without power, likely a rechargeable and non removable battery. So the UMPC device slash tablet means is meant to be held or carried around, not set on a table or a dock and left in one position permanently. Now, SAR testing was done for the 24 gigahertz piece as well, which is specific absorbent rate of the RF signals into the body. So again, body measuring, measuring things with the body. And keep in mind that, you know, while we show a cube, there could still be attachments to the device or it may have curved edges or bezels, et cetera. And we'll, again, show it in a moment here. Uh, but we're curious to see the speculation on the device. It could be something for the Switch 2 or just an alarm clock. Here are some of our thoughts. I doubt it's an alarm clock because it's meant to be held or carried. Uh, but it says a controller that has a mini screen on the front, which displays information from the game on your console or TV, perhaps instructions for a WarioWare style game where you need to shake the controller or pass it around. Uh, given the size of the device, I think it's going to be difficult to wear this for any length of time. So strapping it for long periods of time is probably not the case. Uh, these could be devices like the HTC Vive base stations where you plug in and charge and set up for an AR style play with the Switch 2. Uh, it could be as simple as fancy as a healthy sleep alarm clock device with a little screen on it. Nintendo's going to Nintendo. Um, and then they have all this stuff here and we'll, we'll show all this stuff. What I am, am interested about when I'm talking about these filings for me is really that we, we have this additional information when you actually look up uh, this stuff with the FCC. There's all this additional documentation and credit to Thunderstash on our podcast last week who provided this. And this device is going to have things like a handbook and instruction book and all the stuff being fully public on March 20th. And generally things filed with the FCC in this way are in mass production or have been in mass production already. So this is something Nintendo is making. This is something Nintendo is releasing. And the interesting part is March 20th is a Thursday. Uh, Thursday is when Nintendo traditionally releases their game products now. That is their new release date for game products is Thursday, not Friday. So that could suggest that this is game related. Now, the way these signals work is they can, they've can they been used in many different AR and VR things. Uh, they've also been used to, to measure certain health things in a body from health devices. So this could just be an accessory. The way I look at this as if this is Switch 2 related, which we don't know, my guess is this is a health accessory for a game that is launching with Switch 2 that is a workout style game. Think of Ring Fit Adventure with the ring. Think of, you know, We Fit with the balance bar. This is just another health accessory for a health game at launch that could be evergreen and send 10, 15, 20 million copies or so. Uh, and obviously maybe be a bit expensive to buy at first because you got to get this accessory with it. And maybe the accessory is their new wireless version of 
the vitality sensor or something like that. I think that is a possibility as well. It's also possible that this is uh, something you carry with you that then communicates with your controller, maybe communicates with your actual switch. I don't really know. Uh, this could also just be something related to some sort of phone app they're about to launch, or it could be one of a billion things. I think the only reason to feel like it's related to Switch 2 is just based on when all the stuff about it's going public on March 20th, the fact that we know it's in mass production, we know Nintendo also has a system coming, likely at some point next year, it would feel weird if they were launching these two products and they weren't related in some way. So to me, it probably is related to some sort of game. It's just not a game in that of itself. It's also not a controller in a typical sense. It's more like a meant to be held slash worn sensor of some type. Uh, and what we do with it, I, you know, anyone's guess. So uh, that's my take on all of that, but it could be Switch 2 related, and I wanted to keep you guys updated on that, especially because, hey, March 20th, really convenient day, also happens to be a day Nintendo releases video games. So take that for what you will. I am Nintendo RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about all this Switch 2 madness down in the comments below, and I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video.